guys, it's Skill Up here with a, another vlog. Uh, I haven't done one for the last two days and I'm really sorry about that. The fact of the matter is, I have been so ridiculously busy that it's just like not been possible. Or it had been possible, I'm sure, but like it just would have been some crazy, nonsensical, incoherent like mess that you definitely would not have enjoyed. So um, it's been an absolutely amazing couple of days. Um, the last time we spoke, I had had day zero, which was all the press conferences. Uh, and then in day two is when it really kicked off. So that's where we had the uh, Ubisoft Star Players Lounge, which is a specific area set up quite far away from the actual convention area. And it's an area where Ubisoft kind of set up a whole bunch of playable stalls and uh, stage and all sorts of things to, to basically just cover their own games in a lot of detail. So the spec, the spec ops report that you saw in live stream, the like state of the game style like discussion and we saw the underground gameplay, that was actually filmed at the Star Players Lounge. Um, and so yeah, it was a really cool space. I'm going to try and put out some photos about that as well, but um, really cool and I basically got like a lot of capture time with underground. And um, the, the long story, the short story is for this that I actually went there and they're like, cool, take a few, take a little while to play the game. And he recorded on this USB stick, which is not, it's around here somewhere. And I'm like, yeah, fantastic. So I did it and I had an awesome playthrough with Hamish, which is lots of smack talk. I played with Arix and with 269, which is awesome fun. Um, and, you know, looked at all the sort of gear sets, new weapons, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, shit, yeah, nailed that. Fantastic capture. Can't wait to go back and put out a video. Go back to my hotel and then pop in the memory stick to find that it's completely corrupted and every single bit of footage was lost. So I was like completely gutted about that. And the thing is, those times where I had to capture are like really booked in. It's not like you can just rock up and off you go. There are heaps of other YouTubers there, not just division YouTubers. Like they'll get any, they'll get like any kind of YouTuber that they think is going to sort of, this is going to resonate with their audience. They'll invite them there, they'll work with them, etc. So, you know, I had to basically rebook another time to play the division, um, which luckily Yannick and Hamish were able to organize for me. I went down there and I got in like another sort of two hours or so. And then I uploaded some of that footage and that's where I started, you know, doing some content based on that. So, um, really, really good. If you want my impressions of what the underground was like, I put up a big, long, like 17 minute video that explains all of the information about the underground. And it provides a lot of information that's not anywhere else either, because the, the, the devs actually haven't really spelled out the detail about how this works yet. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Um, and then the other thing that I did, which of course was the number one thing for me, was the weapons. So as soon as I loaded up my game, the first thing I did was like, you know, go to my menu, look at all the guns and just like see what the changes were. So I did a full breakdown of all the weapon uh, balance pass changes uh, that you can find that on my channel as well and uh and yeah, but long story short, great content patch, I think. Like, the underground is cool. The weapon balance change is going to completely mess with the meta big time, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the gear sets are really interesting. And I haven't just spoken about the gear sets yet at all for the specific reason that I know that some of the stats that you saw in that are not correct. So uh, don't, don't lean too heavily into that yet. Don't think that everything you saw is final. I think the bonuses are correct, but I think the numbers for them are not right. So um, just hold off on that a little bit because there's more information coming soon. I'll be putting up that information when I get back to Sydney. Um, so that was day one, day one of the show. So I didn't even go to E3 that day. That was the ridiculous thing. I was so busy that day and I had to get the stuff done that I didn't even go to the show floor. Something I've been wanting to do for my entire life. But anyway, that's, that didn't happen. Um, and then that evening, we kind of just hung out with the, um, with the UB guys, the, the division guys, which is really cool. We had a great time. And then, um, yeah, so then the day yesterday, we had day two, yep. And uh, that was when I actually finally hit the show floor. So I went back, first of all, to the Ubisoft lounge and I covered Ghost Recon and I covered For Honor. Um, and just spoiler alert, For Honor is so good, like so good. I was really skeptical about For Honor and, um, and I was, you know, I was kind of like, this just looks a bit hack and slash, boring, Dynasty Warriors. I got in there though and it's actually super, super solid. So I'm looking forward to showing you that gameplay. Um, and the other one was Ghost Recon. I think that's still a little bit early to be honest with you. As I watched it, I'm like, all right, cool. I think the bones are there, but I think it's still got a ways to go, but it's got like another, almost a year left in development anyway. So it's too early to judge, but for on, I just felt like ready to go right now. Ghost Recon, it felt like it still had some work to do. But um, really enjoyed both of those. And then finally got to the, the show floor, which was 
amazing. Um, so what I learned is that E3 is kind of divided into two halls. There's like the first party hall with Sony and etc. And then there's the third party hall, which is, um, you know, like Bethesda and, and Capcom and whatever. They'll have their stalls, they'll have their booths there. And uh, it's just gigantic. Like it's just huge, huge. Like think of many football fields lengths of, uh, of just crazy gamer stuff. And I'll try and obviously I'll put out some videos in terms of what I saw of that later on as well. But um, you know what? It's funny though. And this is a learning that I had um, about how this all works is that, you know, it's kind of like I've now been to the press conferences. I've had in-depth look at, um, uh, at uh, Ubisoft's lineup. Um, you know, I've obviously been covering, you know, or looking at coverage from other sites, other YouTubers on other games. And when I hit the show floor, it's kind of like, well, what do I do now? And then I just saw that what you actually need to do at E3 if you want to cover something is like line up four hours to be able to play like one game. So the line for Zelda, I believe, to play the, to play the new Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild, I believe it's called, is four hours long. Four hours to play one game. So um, I was like, no thank you, I have better things to do. So I, I kind of learned like structurally e, um, E3 is very much about like you need to have bookings organized, you need to be booked in to see things. And if you're just another publication, like a small time gaming website or small time whatever that's coming there just to like experience E3, then you better be ready for some cues, you know? And I didn't know that at before because I kind of just, I don't know, I had no idea what it was like. But um, it is very much about like get your stuff sorted first, get organized, who you're going to speak to, what time you're going to speak to them. And then after that, you know, you'll be able to, um, yeah, hopefully get some, some, some time in without having to queue up for days. So, um, so yeah, but look, it was fantastic just being there. Like the energy in the room, everyone was cool. It was fun. I got like crazy here, like this giant persona bag, crazy weird persona bag. And then they also had like this giant um, Final Fantasy 14 bag that was like as long as you it was huge. It was basically like you slip it over your shoulder and it would reach down to the floor and everyone wanted one. There was like riots trying to get hold of these bags because of how popular they were. Um, but it was really great. And then last night we had the Ubisoft party. So they sort of bust us to this secret location in Hollywood and they made a very big deal of that. I'm excited. And the DJ kept reminding us. He's like, yo, you're in Hollywood. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm in Hollywood. Thank you for reminding me for like the 50th time. Um, but it was really fun. Like it was a cool setup. It was just like indoor, outdoor, had a huge dance floor, had karaoke upstairs. It had just cool stuff and it was nice. And everyone was kind of letting their hair down. It was like, everyone felt like E3 was over. Let's just enjoy and have some fun and it was really good. So uh, yeah, this morning I basically just kind of had to regroup and pack and get ready to check out. And today I'm going to be meeting with, um, I'm going to have a few meetings actually, but uh, the main ones are a meeting with Activision. So I'm covering, I'm going to have a look at Infinite Warfare um, and I'm going to have a look at um, Destiny. So I'm not really going to be covering Infinite Warfare, that's not really my thing, but Destiny is absolutely my thing. And I'm going to get a chance to speak face to face with the developers talking about the new expansion. Couldn't be more excited for that chat. And then uh, after that, I kind of just chill out before I fly home to Sydney, and then I'm and then I'm back, and I'm back in the real world, so to speak, which is going to be a strange adjustment. But um, yeah, it's been an absolutely incredible trip, and I guess I need to take this opportunity to first of all thank um, like my sponsor. So my sponsor is um, for this trip has been Toby. IX and they make this uh, awesome tool that allows you to basically play games or interact with the games with your eyes. And actually they gave me this laptop and I think I can show you this. I'm try and like turn it this way. Where is it? There it is. Are you guys seeing it? Yeah, this one. I'm trying to like do this with the tripod and it's completely failing right now. But um, yeah, they gave me this awesome laptop and now you see like the whole bit. And um, and it basically, I couldn't have made any of the videos that I made during E3 without these guys. So thank you so much to those guys. They did a really awesome job with that. And uh, they're super cool people as well. And I made, I made a video on um, Toby IX on my channel and uh, you can see and actually how to use it with the division specifically. So check that out if you're interested. Um, I guess the other people I need to thank are, um, is this straight now? It feels like it's gone on an angle. No, it seems the same. Okay, cool. You're crazy. Um, the other thing I, the other people I need to thank are um, obviously Hamish and Yannick. Like, I really need to say a gigantic thank you to those guys. They work super hard in their jobs uh, because obviously, like, the division has a lot of problems. Like, let's be real. You know, it does. And uh, these guys are the front men for that. You know, they're the ones that kind of like tank all of the all of the damage, so to speak, and they really do do a very good job of it. I think they're very transparent and they're just really down to earth. And as soon as we got here. 
you know, we were just talking to them like people, you know, there wasn't like they had this sort of like corporate kind of, hey, we can tell you this, but we can't tell you that. They were like really open with us about things and that was great. Um, and so we just had some fantastic times with them as well. They're fantastic fun. They're cool. So thank you um, to Hamish and Yannick for all of the cool times. Thank you to the rest of the Ubisoft guys for an incredible experience. It's just been like totally amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So thank you so much. And all the other star players as well that I hung out with, the other division guys that I met here were just super cool. And uh, I'm gonna sort of like try and put some of their details out a little bit, uh, like Boom Slang and Shifty Five, and there's a, U a French YouTuber named Morrigan who's super cool. I wish you guys all spoke French so you could watch her videos because she's just a great person. And um, and I feel like I'm missing someone. Oh, and Joker Unique, of course, uh, the mod from Reddit who just does like super great job of just keeping the facts on the page and keeping Reddit under control, which is a very, very tough job at the best of times. But um, yeah, that, that's it for me. That's it for E3, so what I'm, I'm checking out now, and then uh, I'm gonna head. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and I will, um, yeah, I will be sort of going back to Sydney and just covering the shit out of everything that I've seen. There's so much that I wanna tell you that I haven't had the chance to tell you yet, purely because I haven't had time. Just like, because the way I do things, obviously, very detailed, break it down, and that kind of analysis requires time that I just haven't had. So when I get back to Sydney, that's priority number one for me, just sort of building out as much information, putting out as much information as I can in the lead up to patch 1.3, which launches on the 28th of June for Xbox and PC, and on the 2nd of August for PS4. So yeah. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, take good care, and I will see you in the dark zone. Bye-bye.